And we are broadcasting live. Nerds interview with a guru. Sitting here with Jim Savage this week. We're talking about e-commerce. Jim, how are you doing? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. It's a beautiful day today. It sure is, especially for those of us who live in sunny Southern California. <laughs> so um, how's it going in the e-commerce world? Um, it just seems like it's, I, I know for me, I defer to people like you on this because it's so overwhelming, I don't even want to deal with it. Yeah, it, it can be a little overwhelming. I guess it all depends on what you specialize in. So if you come to the point where you know you pick a specialty and stick with it and get really good at it, you know, it, I, I suck at other things. You know, it, As far as bookkeeping and journal entries and all that kind of stuff, you'd have to hold a gun to my head if, to do that kind of stuff anymore. Gotcha. So how did you uh, fall into the world of e-commerce? Give us a little history. Um, it goes way back, actually. I was doing, uh, even before Al Gore created the Internet, I was doing <laughs> EDI back in, you know, when we used to send tapes, FedEx. We'd FedEx tapes, and that was EDI back in the day. But, um, it, yeah, it goes way back. I mean, and it was just a, kind of a natural progression, so... EDI and e-commerce to me are, are kind of the same thing. So um, to me, it's it's all one and the same. So it's all fun and games. Until somebody loses an eye. Exactly. And that happens quite frequently, actually. Especially in the world of e-commerce. <laughs> so um, speaking of which, I mean, I know there's a million solutions out there. I know there's a million combinations of things because I have my shopping cart, I have a payment gateway, I have a credit card processor. Why can't why can't it be simple, Jim? Um, that is the sixty-four thousand dollar question, and I don't have an answer to that. But if it were simple, you wouldn't need people like me. That's all I got to say. All right, so we're that then that's the answer is to keep it to, so you can make a living and it, feed your exactly. family. Exactly, it's me. It's a, really a conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about you, Jim. <laughs> yeah. So. So all right, so I'm, uh, let's just say I'm a brand new business. I'm starting out. I'm going to be selling something online. Uh, let's assume they're tangible products. We'll start with that. Then we'll talk about digital products later, maybe. It seems like once I find one solution that enables me to capture a sale, give me the shipping information I need, process the credit card payment, so I can get paid and ship out whatever it is I'm selling. It seems like it's seems like it should be simple. Why are there so many different solutions? How do I choose? What makes the difference between what's good for my business versus what might not be good? I mean, other than just shopping around for the best rate for credit card processing, maybe. Uh, you know, what do you, what do you, what, when, when somebody comes to you brand new, starting a business, what do you tell them? Because I'm sure they're looking to you for, for answers. It, usually, yeah, but usually I get the customer after they've already tried to do it themselves. So they've chosen something already and they say, can you make it work? But in the rare event, I do get somebody that um, comes to me when they're getting ready to do something. Uh, I have a handful of ones that I'll recommend. Okay. Yeah. So actually, let's talk about that then. The people who come to you already having tried to do it themselves, if they're coming to you at that point, obviously they've recognized that something's gone wrong. So what kind of disasters have you run across that you've had to sort of clean or fix up? And in other words, I guess what I'm really trying to get at is what sort of pitfalls can people avoid if they're getting into it for the first time? Um, it really comes down to making sure that your QuickBooks uh, item list is set up correctly, that it's in that the numbering that you're using for your products on your website coincide with your item list. Um, that you don't have two different things going on there, and um, just making sure that your chart of accounts is set up correctly for, uh, you know, making sure you're capturing the cost of goods sold correctly and, and all of that. So that's usually the things that get overlooked, and then people try to go run their first financial after they've been doing a shopping cart for a while and go, oh, my God, what's going on? Because the financial doesn't make any sense. Right. Okay, so it's just, it's really, it comes down to the how it's set up to integrate with the bookkeeping is where people get screwed up. Yeah. It's it's not that they're choosing a solution for credit card processing that they ought not choose. It's just, it, it's in the setup then. 
Well, and in terms of the, the credit card processing, because there are so many different ones, Intuit obviously is the, the obvious choice for, you know, us pro advisors and the like. Um, but it's not the only game in town. So there's, you know, authorized net and, and other things out there that for payment gateways that we need to make work with QuickBooks for in terms of uh, reconciliation, that's where it gets crazy. Um, and I've written blogs about that is uh, trying to reconcile your uh, merchant account to your business account in QuickBooks is sometimes, you know, quite frightful. <laughs> it can be very daunting. Right. Now, I'm a big fan, as you may have heard, of PayPal. Yep. From strictly a pricing standpoint, because from what I've seen, and I, I'll never forget this, and I tell this story a lot when people say, how can you like PayPal? And I say, well, because I've looked at the numbers. <laughs> and so the reason I like PayPal is because I'll, I'll, I'll share a quick story with you. I had a client who was actually um, sort of a reseller of credit card processing services. And I actually sold one of my other clients on using their service based on the fact that my impression was that you know what what credit card processors were not doing was they were not blending your card types properly so that you'd get a lower effective rate for processing credit cards and what do i mean by that for those who don't know you know the details of how credit card processing works it used to be very simple you had either swipe or non-swipe and swipe uh, transactions were considered qualified non-swipe were unqualified. What does that mean? It means the swipe or qualified transactions were the ones that qualified at the lower rate, which is usually that sort of advertised, you know, let's say 3.2% rate that you were told you were getting, or 2.3%, I should say. And then the non-qualified, which would mean the customer wasn't there, they're considered more risky because they could easily be um, charged back. So you paid a much higher interest, you know, rate for processing those. Well, over the years that changed, and now this, the qualified, non-qualified is more based on card types, and there's hundreds of different card types, right? There's points cards, there's, you know, all different there's corporate cards, and all these different card types, and it's how they blend the card types and decide which card types are qualified versus which are not. Right. And so this company came to me and essentially said that we have a way, we have a formula where we blend it so that you get more of your transactions running through at the qualified rate. The reality is right there and then I saw what a scam this whole industry is in my opinion, and this is strictly my opinion, because the reality is they're telling you you're paying 2.3%, but that's only on a small portion of the transactions that you're processing. Most of them actually now seem to be going through at the higher non-qualified rate. In any case, at the end of the day, I gave it a year with this company and my other client, and at the end of the year, here's what I did. And she said I was being very unfair. I don't agree. What I did was, and bookkeeping-wise, any charge that came through relating to processing credit cards went to one line on the P&L, cost of goods sold, credit card processing fees. Whether it was the percent rate that we paid for the actual processing or the 10 cents per transaction fee or whatever that was or the bank interchange fee or the, you know, the Tuesday afternoon fee or all these other fees that they charged, you know, I would just pro push them through the same line item because at the end of the day what I wanted to do was just add all that up and divide it by the sales figure that was based on what we actually charge credit cards on. And I came up with an effective rate of like 5%. And wow. I, said, I said to the girl, I said, this is outrageous. And she says, well, you're not being fair because some of it's Amex and some of it's other. And I said, it doesn't matter. I'm blending it all into one pool and saying, here's what it cost me to process credit cards. Here's what I processed in terms of sales on credit cards. And that percentage is what it's costing me to process credit cards. I don't care how you divide it up. And she hated me for that because I think she was, I had her backed into a corner. She had nowhere to go from there. So anyway, I think what it comes down to today is the reason I love PayPal is none of that BS exists in their processing world. It's very simple. They charge you, it's about th a little more than 3% initially, and if you're doing more than 3000 a month in sales, there's a little option way at the bottom of their page where you can click to qualify for the uh, pro rate or whatever it is, and then they drop you down to like 2.3%. So yeah. that's why I love PayPal, the simplicity. Now, the downside, there's no easy way to import PayPal into QuickBooks. That's where Doug Sleeter, who, by the way, couldn't be with us tonight, but I think he'll be with us next week, that's where he gets me and says, yeah, but you have to, you know, do all this work to get the transactions into QuickBooks. That's not necessarily true. 
Um, I don't know if you're familiar. There's a um, you might want to make make a note of this. Um, my friend Joe Dwyer has a company called Propelware, and he makes a PayPal to QuickBooks um, adapter, and it's it's really cheap. I don't know how much it is. It's not very much though. And but it's seamless it's, where it will post sales receipts, and it will I'll be able to tell it yeah, what I. See, that's yeah. the problem is PayPal doesn't know what item I'm I've I've used right. Yeah. So somehow I have to. I still have to go into my PayPal download, let's say, and 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 indicate, you know, what which item in my item list was being sold. Right. But what's so? This is called Propel. Propel, like you know, Propel. Propeller head. Propeller head. Uh, where dot com. Okay, because I was going to really start looking into using Transaction Pro Importer, but again, you know, what they couldn't possibly do for me is tell me what item of mine. So it's really on the PayPal side where there needs to be, you know, if PayPal cared enough about QuickBooks to want to be able to set this up, like many processors that are out there today, they would need to provide us with the ability to upload our item list so that when a sale is made, then it can shoot right into QuickBooks. Yep. That's what's missing from PayPal. So propelware.com. Uh, let me find the link for you here. QuickBooks to PayPal integration. Um, it's 200 bucks one time. Eliminate state of entry. Uh, integrate your blah, blah, blah. Create customers and vendors. I'm going to share my screen and show it because I've got it on my screen now. So this yeah. is at propelware.com. Yeah, so go, this to, go to the very bottom, and down there, there's a QuickBooks to PayPal integration. QuickBooks to PayPal. And I'm got to believe it does. Um, so oh, this receipts. is interesting. So it looks like it brings it into this kind of dashboard, maybe, so that you have the opportunity to say, okay. Here are the items somewhere. I assume. It does, yeah, it does sales receipts, um, which is fine because that's all we, you need with PayPal because every yeah. transaction funds it separately. It, that's it's already other. paid. Yeah, so yeah. so that would work for you. Yeah, so this is this is interesting. I'm going to have to take a look at this now. Yeah, the the guy that does this, I'm working with him on a couple other projects. He's a real good guy. So. Um, Autofy, they've been at Sleater, and um, Joe Dwyer's been at a lot of the functions, so you've probably seen them around. Okay, interesting. I did not know about this product. Okay, now, so other than this, other than, so that's a great solution possibly if I'm using PayPal and I want to integrate, and I'm going to try that because I use PayPal for all my, and, and one of the reasons I use PayPal also, by the way, is I have digital products, so that gets into the other area that I was, you know, starting to talk about is because, you know, you live in two worlds potentially when you're selling, let's say, online. Either you sell tangible products or you sell digital products, right? It's In, in concept, I think selling tangible products is simpler from a shopping cart standpoint because really all I need to do is capture an address and send a confirmation, right? right. I need right. to get an address because I need to know where to send the stuff and then make sure that the customer gets a confirmation so that they're assured that, you know, their order has in fact been processed and that, you know, somebody didn't just take their money and run away. Right. So that's almost easier with the digital product. We have extra challenges because I need to have the file that I'm delivering to them stored somewhere. I need to make sure that they can't see a direct link to that location. Otherwise, they don't need my shopping cart anymore. To, they don't need to pay for it, in other words. They could just go put that link in. I mean, yes, there are ways to protect it, but still, I really don't want that transparency there, right? right. So I need a temporary link that points over to my digital product and as with many of us who sell digital products, if you haven't done it yet, you might not understand this, but I can tell you from you know somebody who sells a lot of digital products that I also want to be able to set certain parameters. How long do they have to download it? How many times do they get to download it? Right? Right. So there's programming challenges there that have to be thought through. And there are services out there that do it. And that's why I like PayPal because it integrates nicely with a lot of these services. PayPal itself has a digital product delivery function. I don't use it because the service that I use gives me a whole lot of other infrastructure that I like, you know, such as discount coupon codes and uh, affiliate. I can create affiliate links and so on and so forth. But other than that, Jim, what do you like? What do you use, you know, as far as, you know, when, when customers come to you and they want those kinds of solutions, what do you recommend? 
Um, I mean, there's a couple of different carts. It depends. The one that I, I really recommend a lot, um, Pinnacle Cart, is a is a book, good one for me. Um, they and they do have a digital delivery uh, component to it as well. So Pinnacle Cart's a big one. It's and it's the nice part is is it's built on a WordPress platform. So if you want to integrate it with your social media and everything, it, it's really easy to do that. Uh, Very nice. You can build, build your blog right into it. Um, and their support is really good, and it's here in the U.S. And you know it, it's they're really easy to deal with. They're good guys. Okay. Um, so I like them a lot, um, and they actually integrate directly with QuickBooks. You don't need a, a middleware like a Webgility or a T-Hub to make it work. The only reason you would need something for um, like Webgility is if you were going to do uh, integrate the shipping. They don't do the shipping component. Um, so if you wanted to integrate your UPS and FedEx or you know stamps.com right into your uh, workflow, you can using Webgility. Gotcha. And does Pinnacle Cart also process the credit cards? They can. They can. They work with all the gateways. So um, they work with Intuit and Authorize and like you know I think there's like 60 of them. So right. So you still need the gateway though. You can't. You gotta get have the gateway. Somebody's you know the gatekeeper. Somebody's getting, and that's, you know, if I could figure out how to get rich in this business, it's that guy that's making all the money, the toll booth. Somebody that's making, I want to make a nickel off of every transaction on the Internet. Right, I, right. I would be a very wealthy man. So Well, you know, again, with PayPal, I don't, there's no gateway needed. PayPal is the gateway and the processor. Um, true, true. You know, so that's where I, I, I mean, I was spending a fortune. I had a, you know, a digital shopping cart when I originally set it up where I was using Authorize.net. Then I had to have Cybersource was the Authorize.net processing company, which yep. is still around. So I had to Authorize.net. I had to have Cybersource, and I had to have it all talk to my website. I paid, I had to pay about $6,000 for a programmer to come in and program PHP, set up my website. There's all kinds of... Uh, stuff we you know compliance stuff that we had to do we had because it was through authorized.net I had to make sure I had like a legal disclaimer page on my website with all this language it was very specific you know what had to be there and they had to confirm that it was there it's just which I understand that you probably want to do that anyway but uh, it's just so much easier <laughs> there's so much less headache yeah. but now I'm, I'm curious um, so you mentioned Pinnacle Pinnacle works with WordPress now is, so is Pinnacle like a plugin that I put into WordPress or how does that work it's not really a plugin, um, and they now are pretty much exclusively doing it where they'll host your your site for you. They host the shopping cart. Um, they used to do it where you could um, host it yourself and you download their shopping cart onto it. But now it um, they do the hosting for you, and okay. so that would include the whole domain. So that would include your WordPress blog and the whole kit and caboodle. Right. And then, so what do you think about WooCommerce? Uh, WooCommerce, I just answered an email five minutes before this meeting about WooCommerce. Um, it's a, that differs from Pinnacle in that it's a, uh, it is a WordPress plugin. So it's not as robust as something like Pinnacle Cart because it doesn't do, and then WooCommerce also has a plugin to the plugin that will work with QuickBooks, but it, it's fairly limited. It doesn't do as much as, um, you know, a, a real, like a WebGility that has a lot more functionality to uh, how to get your data into QuickBooks, where WooCommerce is a little more um, rigid. But it works. I mean, if you're just doing simple um, simple products, it, it works, works fine. Okay, great. <clears throat> and um, you, what about big commerce? Big commerce. There's the big. Well, I'd say the big two is in um, Magento and Big Commerce. Uh, big Commerce is, is a great product. It it, it works well. Um, they have, and that, nah, I can't say anything yet. But they, there is some um, activity pending where they're going to have. Uh, the QuickBooks integration built right into BigCommerce, so you won't need a middleware. 
Um, so stay tuned. I think there's supposed to be a press release this week. So the, there'll be something announced. Um, but Big Commerce will have the QuickBooks integration built right into its um, its shopping cart, so which will be nice. And I know Doug's big on that because uh, the Sleater Group uses Big Commerce, so he's been on me to get them to about the sales tax thing, and you know, it, I'm on them too. But it, it's a complicated um, scenario, so there's no real easy answer when it comes to sales tax. That's a whole nother ball wax. Right. And so that was going to be another question I had was, so when I set up these applications to process my cards, they're not really going to track the sales tax for me. That's something I have to do on the accounting software end. Yeah. And right now there is no easy, if you want to do your sales tax reporting in QuickBooks, good luck. It, it's real difficult. You need something like, um, look at that, Avalara. There's a Right there. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I was going to say. Especially if you're selling to a wide geographic range, I think at this point you almost have to use something like Avalara, so that it takes all the thinking out of it for you. Yeah, or you could write something yourself, but it the sales tax landscape is changing so quickly that uh, it's changing daily. So at least with Avalara, you know they've got a, a team. That's all they do is stay on top of sales talks. It's right. Well, and from a setup awesome. standpoint. It's so easy. I mean, you set it up, you create a sales tax item called Avalara, and then it just figures it all out for you. I love that. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so they really don't have a whole lot of competition in that market. There are other products out there, um, but I haven't seen anything that works as, as well as that. Right. And actually, um, we're working on, I, I was talking with uh, Deborah from the Slater Group. We're going to be doing a, a joint webinar with Avalara, um, here at some point in the near future. So I, I'm talking with their um, legal guy. He did a session with me at Sleater, so we're going to um, put that into a. I'm sure you'll be involved because I'm sure we'll do some kind of video thing with that. Mm -hmm. Great. And so, all right, so let's go back to challenges, problems, things that you've seen just from working with people without mentioning names, of course. Um, you know, if I'm, again, going back to the question, when somebody comes to you, and let's go to the scenario that you said, you said was more typical for you, um, when somebody comes to you and says, okay, you know, here I am, I've got a problem, it's not set up correctly, um, well, I guess what I want to ask is, in your opinion, because again, we talk, you said earlier, it was a mapping thing, really, it's a matter of setting it up, so talking QuickBooks, which solution, in your opinion or experience, do you think, if there is one, is the best solution in terms of QuickBooks integration. Or at the end of the day, what everybody wants to know is which solution should I pick that's going to amount to the least amount of sort of work or data entry that I have to do on my end. I mean, everybody would love to just push a button and say, okay, sync it up, you know, record the deposits, and let me go home. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, I like WebGility a lot. Um, it's really robust. And if you set it up correctly, you can. They have an automatic scheduler so that you can automatically just post the stuff right into QuickBooks. Um, it, you know, once you've worked through all the item issues, it just flows. I mean, it works really well. So the scheduler, you can have it schedule every minute, so it's almost real time of the data coming right into QuickBooks. And if the other um, a lot of people will have a website and Amazon or eBay or both, and Amazon is uh, horrendous for um, fees. I don't know if you've dealt with Amazon before, but you can have uh, you know four or five different fees coming out of your pay. You know they send you a, a biweekly disbursement and it's net of all their fees. So how do you record all of those fees? Webgility does a pretty good job on the settlement report. They'll break out all the fees for you. Um, where I haven't seen anybody else do that. So it, it does a really good job helping you reconcile. And I wrote a whole blog about that using um, clearing accounts rather than your general checking account to uh, you know reconcile your, your um, fees and your, your disbursements from Amazon and or eBay. Right, no, that's a mess. Uh, the 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 one situation. So, I, 
Go ahead. The one situation I saw that worked really well with Amazon was actually Mass90, believe it or not, um, has an infrastructure that talks very nicely with Amazon, and that can import. Really? Wow. I had, I had no idea. Client, I had a client who was selling a lot of products on Amazon, and, and he said he once he had his set up with Mass90, it, he, I mean, I never saw it myself, but he said it was great. Wow. Uh, I would like to see that, actually. That's That's interesting. Because my um, the times I've worked with Mass90, it's usually getting data off of Mass90, not bringing data into. Right, right. Well, yeah, because aside from that, it's such a complex program. Most people give up on it and go back to QuickBooks. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, so you mentioned with um, Pinnacle, it works with QuickBooks. Uh, I mean, and from everything you've described so far, um, I was going to say it works with WordPress, but from everything you've described so far, it doesn't sound to me, in the half an hour that we've been talking, like it really is that difficult. But why do people have so many problems with e-commerce, and why is it so challenging? I think just because it's different. You know, it, it's it's outside of their comfort zone. So, you know, it, it's like, well, you know, from being an, an accountant with helping people with, with debits and credits and you know it's just intimidating to someone that doesn't understand it or they don't want to understand it um, they just want somebody to do it for them so it's it's the same thing you know we have customers that just can't get QuickBooks and they don't understand them. so I'm trying you know desperately here to get other pro advisors and other ISPs and you know other consultants out there on the stick because it's not that difficult. And most of what I'm doing, I probably shouldn't be giving away all my trade secrets, but there's, <laughs> I have literally, I don't advertise, um, you know, I don't need to advertise because all my business comes from referrals, either from past customers or other consultants. So um, I've got way too much work right now, and it's a good problem to have. And I really, you know, need, there's a couple others that I'll refer work out to. Um, but I need more, you know, there, there's definitely a lot of, the water's fine, man, come on in. It's not that difficult, so I think it's just overwhelming to people because it's unknown. Gotcha. Now, in terms of, uh, you, let's, say I, let's say I have a, a, a WordPress website, right? Yep. Now, what I've done is I've, you know, because of because I'm me, I just I created a site in WordPress. Like I said, I'm using a service called eJunkie that works with PayPal. And so what I've done for my online store is I just I basically create a blog post. I set up the product in eJunkie. It gives me the button code, right? Mm -hmm. I just pull the URL out of the button code and use my own button because I don't like eJunkie's button. Okay. And so I basically put up a blog post and put a button in there, and when somebody wants to add it to the cart, they click the button, add it to their cart. And okay. it pops open another tab on their browser, and it says, okay, you've now added this to your cart, and you can either check out or go back and add more stuff. So I guess when I'm, I'm, what I'm wondering is when you talk about something like a pinnacle cart that works with WordPress, um, or let's say I'm using a Webgility, because you certainly made that sound like an attractive option, um, when I use, if I want to use Webgility, do I need to have an actual shopping cart, or could I? Is it? Is, yeah. Is, I yeah. Do it's need not to have a shop, It's not a shopping cart. So it's everything but. So it integrates with. I think there are over thirty now different shopping carts, and they they have all the big ones. And every okay. once in a while, I'll get somebody that comes up with, "Hey, I'm using you know Bob's shopping cart. Do you integrate with that?" And no, they don't. Okay, so when I'm using Webgility. I, I set up my products there on Webgility, or I need a shopping cart. Webgility is just processing the credit cards. It's just the middleman. So you, you either can push from QuickBooks. If you're just starting a website, you can take your item list and push it out to your um, website using Webgility, or vice versa. You can take it from your shopping cart and push it into QuickBooks, and then that keeps it in sync. Okay, so if I'm using Webgility, what are some good shopping cart applications that you've seen, especially if my website is done in WordPress? Um, well, it's really, it, it, to me, it doesn't matter. I mean, it, there's uh, Pinnacle, 
the uh, Big Commerce, Magento, uh, Shopify is a decent one. Um, there's some others that I would avoid, but I'll tell you those offline. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for the most part, you know, they all do an adequate job at it. But there's different variants. I mean, if you sell products that have like shirts and you sell a blue shirt with an extra large size and you need those product variants, some shopping carts don't handle variants. So you need to make sure that it, it will work for you. Okay. <clears throat> so when I get one of these shopping cart applications in place, I get it talking to a Webgility, right? So Webgility is going to take the information. Somebody comes to the shopping cart, they make a purchase, goes to Webgility, payment gets processed, Webgility feeds it into QuickBooks, I can go home. Yep. <clears throat> so once I've got that shopping cart set up, how do I get that shopping cart into my website? Um, how do you get that shopping cart into your website? Or is the shopping cart set up such that that's, you build it, it? It really is the website. The shopping cart is the website. So okay. it's just an extension of the website. <clears throat> so I have my website at nerdenterprises.com, right? Yep. Let's say I wanted to use, instead of using my e-junkie PayPal setup, let's say I wanted to go to something like this, right? Because mm -hmm. I want, because I, it becomes that. Yeah, you would just... You, you would just integrate it, you plug in the, um, I'm not sure who you're uh, using for hosting, but it, we could easily plug a, a so it goes, shopping cart. I go into cart. my hosting then, and that's where I have to install the shopping cart, and then, but so, then somewhere my concern would be is that's going to render as a page on my website, I want, I want it branding wise to be consistent with the look and feel of the rest of my website. Yes, yeah you would. So that's where I'd um, bring in somebody like with Pinnacle Cart or um, Magento or Big Commerce. There's a lot of um, people that specialize in um, branding and you know web design for specifically for those marketplaces. So I, need, I need like a design type person then to get in there and make that happen. Unless you're totally nerdy, which I have a feeling you might be. You know, you could probably do it yourself. Right, I might be, but I'm also speaking on behalf of other people out there who are right. watching and listening later. Right. So the bottom line is, it, it's it's not the sort of thing unless you're a tech, you know, a techie person. It's not the sort of thing you really want to sort of try and tackle on your own. I wouldn't say that completely. I mean, if you're somebody that you've got two or three products um, and you just want to get them out there, you could have a, a shopping cart up and working yourself in you know one evening you just get it going and integrate it with QuickBooks it wouldn't be that difficult it where you get into difficulty is if you you already have an existing infrastructure how do I integrate that shopping cart into my existing infrastructure that's where it gets a little complicated um, but if you don't already have a, um, a website and you don't already have something going on it's not that difficult. You could do it yourself. Gotcha. Okay, we're going to backtrack a little bit here because we've got a question. <clears throat> um, you were mentioning a little while ago that uh, you wish there were more people out there that you could refer work to, people who do what you do. Yep. So Dennis is asking, what is a good way to get up to speed on doing the kind of work that Jim does? Um, can you hit me with that question again? You broke up real quick, or I sure. broke up. What's a good way for some, let's say let's say I wanted to start doing what you do. What's a good way to get up to speed? Where should I start? Uh, start on the Sleater blog. Go to um, sleeter.com slash blog. And actually the ones that I've written, if you find in the experts corner or whatever it is, um, I started at e-commerce 101, and I've been trying to each time add to that. So it, it's really kind of a, you know, e-commerce primer, if you will, that goes through all the basics, but that, that would be a good start. Okay. Um, and then, you know, it, I've taken people on where, you know, I'll help them do a, one or two installs and then just say, go, you know, do it on your own, you know, because there's plenty of work out there. Right, right. Okay, so that's basically where they should start, though, in, in a very literal sense, is, is just go read what you've already written about the topic. So yep. you, you've given people kind of the lay of the land on the Sleater blog about how to go about learning what they need to know. Yep. 
And so if I, I mean, if I am going to come to you, uh, I mean, I, I guess if, uh, what I'm trying to ask is, who are your customers? Who, like, who comes to you? Somebody who's got a shopping cart, like you said, and but it's not working the way they think it should, or? Usually, and it, it's usually other pro advisors or something that will come to me and say, I got a customer that um, is completely upside down in their, you know, e-commerce, and can you help them out? And they'll bring me in as a consultant to help straighten out their their client situation. Gotcha. All right. Um, what else? What else should we know about? I, I don't know. I, I think I'm not sure what what Doug's plan was. If we were going to try to do this on a regular basis, or you know, maybe a weekly or monthly thing. I mean, we we can have a, a topic each time if if we want to do that. I wasn't. I think tonight was just kind of a yeah. yeah, just an overview, and then I think we want to do a little deeper dive because, again, you know, when it's funny when I talk to you, it seems so simple, but you know, the reality is when I'm out there talking to everybody else, it seems infinitely complicated, you know. And it's like yeah. I think I think also because a lot of people would like to know that you know they could go to somebody like yourself, let's say, and have you come back and say, well, you know, here it is. This is the one solution. This is the glove that fits everyone's hand. Just use this, you know, processing. Uh, uh, solution with this shopping cart and here's how you can get it set up in your website so that it's seamless so that at the end of the day you can come to work click a button count your money and go home right and there is no one-size-fits-all solution out there um, there is some that come close uh, and maybe a topic for a future show is we could have the, the agile iron guys show what they're doing I think that comes close because they have a total cloud-based solution. Um, it's kind of a and it builds in the CRM component and the whole. It's kind of a net suite for uh, QuickBooks. So yeah, I wasn't sure if you were familiar with their product or if you'd gotten familiar yet. I know I've taken a very cursory look at it and it looks really cool. Yeah, actually, I I was one of the first ones that came to. It. If you go on their site and look at the, they have some kind of promo video. It's got some lame quote on there from me or something, but. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, so um, what was I going to say along those lines? Do you think, do you have the ability to do any kind of demos to show people how these things work? I know it may not be easy because you can't really do it with real live data, but if you have no, any kind of I have some dummy stores set up. I've got a, I think I have a big commerce um, and a pinnacle store set up. Uh, that are just dummy data. So, yeah, we certainly could um, walk through that. And there's some other cool products out there, too. There's one called uh, Open for Business that is made by Santrio.com. They make a, a customer and a sales rep portal that are really cool where I can have a customer portal. So if I want my you know, my business-to-business -business customers to just have a portal of their own, I can have that up in an hour. Um, where you know it makes it really simple to put up a customer portal. So right. So you know what me would be interesting then I think in the next few weeks to, is to maybe have to, like take a deeper look at some of the different products. Yeah. That way we can give people some very direct insight because we can look at a product and then we can talk about who's this for. You know, who you know what and just talk generically about what kind of you know what where where are the showstoppers? Where might Pinnacle not work for me anymore based on my specific business dynamics. You know, th those kinds of things we can maybe take a look at over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, and I'm sure I could even get the vendors to, to jump in with us as well, but um, I would say one is we could do Pinnacle and or WebGility together. Um, Santrio would be a good one to, to demo and then also Agile Iron. Um, yeah, I would love to show Agiline because, like I said, I've taken a look at that and it looks really cool from what I've seen so far. So definitely that one. So yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's. Uh, I'll leave it up to you as the expert okay. to decide kind of what we want to look at and in what order. And you know, but I think this will be really interesting for people because I think it's been a big pain point for a lot of people. Um, okay. Obviously, if you're as busy as you say you are, there's a reason for that. <laughs> it's not because yeah. people are having an easy time with their e-commerce <laughs> setups. Thank God, it keeps me busy. So. That's right. Let's keep it complicated. <laughs> um, no, but I think this will be good. And then, uh, you know, then get them, get, get them to sponsor. Get them to sponsor us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's cool. And then um, also, 
Have you got a, a, a uh, this is kind of a side topic, but if you go into LinkedIn, you can recommend and endorse people for their various skills. Yes. I, mean, I don't know if you've seen. Um, a, you, you and Stacy endorsed me for pole dancing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, did you I did put see it that. up on your site. I called Stacy. I did approve it. It is there. <laughs> It could, good. I was waiting to see if more people would jump on it. And, and well, I'm fun. sure they will now that they know about it. The truth is, I happen to be yeah, an I think I had pole dancer. Yeah, I guys, think you would. I, I'd pay to see that. <laughs> I'll give you a lap dance, too. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, you got to be careful what you ask for. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so yes, you, so so yes, I did get the endorsement. Thank you very much for that. That's yeah, uh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Anything we can do to to help. Far too out, yeah. kind. I <laughs> I actually I I called Stacy on it, and I said because they both came uh, right around the same time. I got messages that you and her had both endorsed me for skills. It didn't say which ones. Then I looked and I saw that one of them was pole dancing, and I I knew it had to be you and or Stacy. There you go. Well, it's the beauty of social media. So. It is. Social media is a wonderful thing. All right, so cool. We'll wrap up a little early on this then, but we'll come back next week. And uh, if you want, email me you know, offline whatever products you want to look at next week, and that way I'll put it out there on the social media channels and let people know what we're going to be taking a look at. All right, that sounds great, man. Awesome. Jim, thanks so much for uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. All right, take care. All right, bye.